Today I will be explaining the history of the Gilbreth Principle, how the Gilbreth Principle works, as well as providing a demonstration of the Gilbreth Principle. History. The Gilbreth Principle was discovered by Norman Gilbreth. He was a graduate of the University of California in Los Angeles and obtained a bachelor's degree in science, a bachelor's of science and mathematics. He went on to work with, for the Rand Corporation as an expert compiler and in optimization. As well as he performed his magic through the 2000s at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, California. In 1958, Gilbreth published his first article on the Gilbreth Principle by providing an explanation of his trick, Magnetic Colors. This was an observation of how the two stacks of cards in repeating sequence of red and black were riffle shuffled together, create certain outcomes could be predicted. He published his second principle in 1966, which is which was a further observation of the first, this time using a larger repeating sequence. For the trick I will be demonstrating today, to set up, to set up the trick, you need a stack of 20 cards numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the repeating sequence of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, aces being 1. So to perform the trick, I, you must allow the volunteer to cut the stack as many times as they like, have the volunteer deal down about half the pack of cards at a t one at a time, and have the volunteer shuffle the two packs of cards back together. So to complete the trick, you draw the top five cards of the, in the pack and place the cards face up in front of the volunteer. So. I have here a stack of cards arranged in the order ace, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that's done four times. So, what I want you to do is I want you to take it and give it as many cuts as you want. You happy with that amount? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just cutting a deck of cards doesn't really mix it all too well. So what I want you to do now is deal down on the table about half the stack. I lost count. Two. Doesn't have to be exact. So now, if you want, you can shuffle those together, or I can do it. I think I learned. Okay. <laughs> okay, you should do it. You should do it. <laughs> okay. I will shuffle these together. <laughs> Okay, so with a stack of 20 cards, there is approximately 20 factorial possible combinations. So that's about 2.4 times 10 to the 18 power. Mm -hmm. So there are certain ways that you can arrange the deck beforehand that you can guarantee certain outcomes. And the outcome that I gar have guaranteed by arranging the deck the way I have is that every five cards, even after you shuffle them, are going to contain an ace, two, three, four, and five. It is the case for the first five, the second five, the third five, and the fourth five. The way that this trick works is that when the cards are dealt down, the set 
that sets stack B to be a reversed sequence of stack A, meaning that the first card in A is the same as the last card in B. As a result, when the first card in A is placed randomly in B, then that card originally in B is forced out of the sequence of five cards. Hence, the sequence of five cards still contains the cards one through five, but no longer in the descending order. It follows that if we continue the process of mixing the two stacks together, then we can generate two stacks of five cards, all containing the numbers one through five. The ultimate Gilbert principle states that if we take a sequence of n cards numbered in sequential order and deal them down, deal down a number of cards less than n, then we can draw any number of cards less than n from the top and arrange and shuffle them together. Then you can draw any number of cards less than n from the top and arrange them in such a way that the cards are in sequential order. For instance, if we take the sequence of numbered 1 through 10 and deal them down, deal down the top six cards and shuffle them together, one possible combination of the sequence is the sequence 6, 5, 7, 4, 8, 9, 3, 2, 10, 1. With this, we can demonstrate that drawing any number of cards less than 10 from the top of the deck can be rearranged in sequential order. For instance, n equals 4, we can rearrange to get the sequence 4, 5, 6, 7. For n equals 6, we get 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And n equals 8, we get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. In conclusion, Norman Gilbreth has made a great contribution to the field of mathematics and magic alike with his observations. There are hundreds of tricks that involve his principle that are still widely used today.